God bless you. Today we're going to look at a prayer that changes everything. The disciples came to Jesus Christ and asked him, how can we pray? And Jesus taught them how to pray and we're going to look at uh, that prayer which is uh, usually known as the Lord's Prayer. But we're going to go into the depth of uh, that Lord's Prayer, how powerful it is, how it changes every circumstances and everything in our lives. Stay tuned, I'll be right back, right away. Welcome to Kingdom Insight with Dr. Kazumba Charles. This program is designed to help you discover treasures and truth from God's Word and also give you deeper insights and understanding of the character and nature of God. Here is your host, Dr. Kazumba Charles. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 5, Jesus taught his disciples how to pray. And this prayer is so very powerful when we understand the points that Jesus pointed out in that prayer that you and I can make it a lifestyle to pray realizing how powerful the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples is. We're going to read the book of Matthew here. I want you to stay with me as after we done teaching on this prayer, we're going to pray with you. We're going to declare the word of God into your situation. We're going to believe God to change every circumstance in your life, to change everything that is going on with your life. We believe in the power of prayer. We believe in the power of the name of Jesus Christ. And uh, in Matthew chapter 6, verse uh, Verse 5, Jesus teaches his disciples how to pray. First, we start in verse 5. He says that whenever you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites because they love to pray standing in the synagogues on the street corners to be seen by people. Right there, first, we understand prayer is not for people to see us how religious we are. I want you to know that right away. Uh, Jesus says here, that's what they, the religious leaders were doing, to be seen that they pray or they know how to pray. But, and then Jesus continues, he says, truly I tell you, they have their reward if they want to pray to be seen by people. And then verse 6, but when you pray, go into your private room, shut your door and pray to your father who is in secret. So he is telling his disciples here how to win a battle, how the prayer that changes circumstances can be prayed. Go in your knees. Have an altar where you can pray from. Have a place, a room where you can declare the word of God, where you can speak into your situation. Have a place where you can go and uh, pray so that you can speak to God and cry out to God and plead with God or speak to your situation because there is power in prayer. There is power when we pray. So he begins to tell them, go, go, and, and then he says, and your father who sees in secret will reward you. When you pray, don't uh, babble like the Gentiles, since, th since they imagine they will be heard for their many words. You see, it's very simple to declare to God. And actually, your prayer is so powerful when we realize that uh, God has said uh, He knows what we need. Then why do, should we pray? I'm going to show you in a second here how powerful your prayer can be. Not because you are crying to God to do what you, you want Him to do, but because you are honoring and uplifting his name in the midst of your needs. Now listen to this, he continues, he says, and your father who sees in secret will reward you. When you pray, don't babble like uh, the Gentiles, since they imagine they will be heard for their many words. Don't be like them, because your father knows uh, the things you need before you ask. That is a uh, very, very powerful right there, that God knows already before you ask. God knows your situation right now. God knows what you are going through. God knows uh, what you are seeking for. From him, the deliverers you desire, the deliverers that he needs to come through for you. God knows. Then how should we pray? And that is the most important understanding that we can have is to understand how to pray. 
because God already knows what you're going through. God already knows what you are battling. God already knows what is happening in your life. It's a good, good thing to understand. God knows my problems. God knows my trouble. God knows what I'm going through. It is good, but it is better and powerful now to understand how to go to God in prayer. So he continues in uh, chapter 9. He's going to tell his disciples now how to pray, how to pray, what to say, how to say, and the meaning of that. Now, how, we're going to dig deeper into this prayer, so stay with me. He begins in uh, verse 9, Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. He says, that, therefore, you should pray like this. You should pray like this. Our Father in heaven, your name be honored as holy, your kingdom, your, your, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Do not bring us into temptation, but deliver us from um, the evil one. Now that is a very powerful right there. I, I want us to dissect each and every scripture. We're going to cut through each and every scripture for us to understand better what, first of all, this prayer is all about. Let's unpack this and understand how you can pray from a position of power and authority in your situation. The first word that Jesus says here, therefore you should pray like this. That word like this simply means that the Lord's prayer was not to be prayed as a recital. It is not something that you just recite, our Father who art in heaven. That is not how you pray, but uh, it was uh, rather a model a model to pray from, or a foundation, or a bedrock to pray from. You can pray, you can cry out to God, our Father, my Father, our Father who art in heaven. You can cry out to God, and God can hear you. And then it says, uh, your name be honored. Right there, we begin to understand something deeper. Because uh, he says, he knows your needs, he knows what you're looking for, he knows what you desire, then pray like this. This is the model of the Father foundation of your prayer. Begin by our Father, our Father, who art in heaven. And then he says here, your name be honored. That's where I want to take you right there. Because there is something powerful when you honor God. There is something powerful when you honor God in the midst of your battle. When you glorify God in the midst of your battle. You're not glorifying God because everything is going good. You're not glorifying God because everything around you is going well. It shouldn't be going going well for you to realize how powerful it is when you call upon the name of the living God and you honor God and you honor his name and you reverence the name of God. So here, your name be honored in prayer. We are to be, first of all, humble before we come, before we go before God in prayer. That humility will secure your victory because when you humble yourself at the feet of Jesus Christ, at the feet of the Master, in humility, you understand who you are praying to. That's why Jesus said, go in secret. Because in secret, in your own place, or in when you have an altar, you're going to go in humility before God. You're going to go on your knees, humbling yourself before God. Listen, we don't command God to do what we want Him to do. We have no power to tell God, do this for me. Our power to let God work on our behalf is is dependent on how humble, how humble we can go in his presence, knowing and glorifying his name. That's why Jesus says here, your name be honored. Let God be honored in your life. Let God be honored no matter what is going on in your life. Glorify him and magnify him, not because of what is going on in your life. Don't glorify that problem. Now, I'm not telling you not to say what is going on. I'm not telling you to have that faith that says, if you talk about what is going 
going on. They ne- you are calling for, you know, for, for something bad to happen. That's not what I'm talking about. Acknowledge what is going on. Acknowledge what is happening around you. But above all, acknowledge that there is a God who is so powerful. There is a God who can change every circumstances. There is a God who is so powerful who can change your situation. His name is a Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Elohim, the God of all power who changes circumstances from ages to ages. He has proven himself that there is no power that can overshadow the power of God. So here Jesus is telling his disciples, helping them to understand the power of honoring God. Go in humility before God. Go before God in humility because we can tell God what to do. We can tell God how to do things, when to do it. It is God's appointed time that he does everything. Our duty is to go in humility, to honor his name, to glorify him, to believe he is capable of changing your situation. Prayer is not Prayer is not instructing or commanding or pulling the hand of God to act on your behalf. Prayer is simply you talking to your daddy, speaking with your daddy, declaring to your daddy how powerful he is. You have to remind the devil that, that God is the one who is in charge. We pray to recognize who is in charge. We pray to honor God in the sense, you know, when I go into prayer, I know what I need. I will ask for what I need later. But here's what I'm going to do as I go into prayer. This is how you begin to pray now. You're going to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I honor your name. You are glorified. I enthrone you above every problems. I enthrone you above every situation in my life. I enthrone you above every circumstances that is going on in my life. I enthrone you above my failures, above my sins that you can be glorified. We pray to honor the God of all power, to honor his name, to remind ourselves also who is the creator of the universe and the sea and all that is within them. The God of all power, the God who fights for us, the God who answers us, and the God who is all powerful. And honor Let me tell you what honor does. Honor, when we honor God's name in prayer or glorify his name above our problems and uh, and remind our problems that God is all powerful, God will act on your behalf. That's why Jesus begins now to tell his disciples, he says, uh, your name be honored. Has what? Has holy, holy, holy. Your name be honored. And then he goes on to say, Your kingdom come and your will be done. Let me tell you what that word means there. Your kingdom come. It's simply saying uh, the rule and reign of God or the government of the kingdom of God to come and uh, rule and reign in your situation. When we pray your kingdom come, we are praying to say let your rule and reign, let your power and, and, and your mighty come in our situation to rule and reign, to rule rule and reign. That means the rule of reign, the rule and reign of God will change your circumstance because where the presence of God is, not only is there liberty, there is deliverance. So here Jesus says, I pray your kingdom come, your rule, God, your rule, your reign, let it come over me. Let your presence come over me and take charge because when God is in charge of your life and his will is prevailing in your life, you will succeed worshiping him you will succeed following after God you will succeed materially and God will be with you why because whenever the will of God is being done wonders happen your will may lead you to failure but God's will perfect will will lead you to success that's why it is beautiful I told my daughter imagine if God had to open a portal and shows you some things that might have attacked you to where you were going and yet God stopped you from that. Why? Because God's perfect will is to protect you. God's perfect will is to watch over you. God's perfect will prevails more than any other things. So abide by God's perfect will. That's why Jesus is saying here, your kingdom come, your rule and reign come, and your will be done. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That means it is perfect. That means it is a perfect will. 
And then verse 11, he says, uh, give us today our daily bread. Give us today our daily bread. Meet our needs. Sustain us, God. Sustain us. But look out first the, before he asks for what he wants or before you ask what you want, begin by what? Your kingdom come. Or honor the name of the living God. And then he says here, give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts. Forgive us our sins. Listen. Don't go to God as if you are all that perfect. We know perfect all of us, but we have to go to God in humility. When you go with honor in your, in your prayer, you will see God do wonders here. That's why the Bible says what? Forgive us our date. Begin with that humility. Ask God to forgive you. Ask God to cleanse you. Ask God to wipe out all your sins. And not only that now, because you are humble and because you know you are not perfect and because you know you are before a holy God, a God who is holy and righteous, here is what now you should do as well. As we also are forgiven our debtors, you need to forgive as well. You see, prayer that moves the mountains and prayer that moves situations Situations and changes situation is a prayer that is prayed with humility. That's why when you go into prayer, forgive those who have done wrong to you. Forgive those who have spoken evil of you. Forgive those who may have said some things and begin now to glorify God. And then he says here, uh, verse 13, and do not bring us into temptation. This means, uh, all, this means that do not allow anything that will pull us away from you. Anything that will pull us away from the presence of God. That's why he says, uh, do not lead us into temptation and deliver us from the evil one. Deliver us from the evil one. Listen, God's will is to deliver you from every power, from every bondage, from every spirit of the enemy. God's will is to deliver us from every power that is not of him. That's why the Lord's prayer is so powerful. So when you say your kingdom come, and your will be done. You are saying, God, let your kingdom, let your power, let your rule and reign come in my situation and help me in this battle. Let your power of the kingdom of God help me in this battle. And then you begin to see God begins to work on your behalf. That's why this prayer is so powerful. It is not a recital. The Lord's prayer is not a recital. The Lord's prayer is a model. It's a foundation. Wherever you're praying for a situation, you got to remind yourself, let God's kingdom and rule reign. Be it cancer, I'm commanding, let the rule and reign of God or the power of God rule over this cancer. Cancer, you have no power. You cancer, you have no authority because the government of the kingdom of God has come down and is will. What is God's will? God's will for you and me is not only for deliverance or salvation is for you to be healed for you to be delivered for you to be well for you to walk in the presence of God and enjoy the presence of God so the next time you are praying remember these words our father in another way our king the king over our lives so the Lord's prayer is actually declaring the kingdomship of God or the kingship of God God is you you are my king. God, you are the king that rules over my life. Your government is the government that I have, that, that, that I live in. Now fight for me. Now stand with me. Now God, battle this problem I'm going through. Why well, Jesus was telling them to pray that way because he knows when you say thy kingdom come, you are talking about God to come and rule or take charge of the place. And where God as he is in charge, the enemy has no power. The enemy has no power over your life. We're going to pray right now. I'm going to stand with you in prayer. I want you to understand, first of all, prayer that changes everything and moves mountain is a prayer that is prayed with humility before God. Our prayer is not to command God to do things on our behalf. Our prayer is to honor God, to remind the devil how good God is, how powerful God is is, how God is our creator. The Bible says God knows exactly what you are looking for, what you need. If God knows what you need, 
then we need to change how we pray. Don't just pray all the time, asking God, give me, give me, give me, but pray to, to honor God, to glorify God in the midst of your battle. Even when the storm is raging, you are always reminding that storm, Jesus is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. He never changes. He will never change, and he has never lost a battle, and he's not going to let me down. That's what the Bible says. And the Bible also declares if God is for us who can be against us nothing that can be against you so I want you to know how to pray prayer that changes circumstances prayer that changes situation is a prayer that is prayed with humility go before God humble yourself ask for forgiveness ask God repent of our sins and we believe the power of the name of God God begins to do wonders in our lives I want to pray for you right now in the name of Jesus that the kingship over the Lord that the government of the kingdom of God will take charge over your situation you may be there you've never given your life to the Lord it is impossible to walk in the power of the kingdom of God that you have no part in I want you to be part of this kingdom it is a very simple a very simple to get into this kingdom by just a simple prayer and your commitment afterwards just say, dear Jesus, I repent of my sins. Forgive my sins today. Cleanse me, wash me, and purify me. Father, in Jesus' name, we declare the power of the kingdom of God. We declare the power of the living God upon every person who is sick right now, upon every person who is going through a tough time. We declare the kingdom of God, your rule and reign, to come upon them right now and to shift everything that needs to be shifted right now. Shift every situation right now. We pray for a breakthrough in Jesus' name. We pray for transformation. We pray for change and salvation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You are there and you don't have Jesus and you don't live with Jesus. You haven't surrendered your life to God. It is impossible for the kingdom of darkness to let go of you. You have to be in the light, in the kingdom of the light, which is the kingdom of God. I want you to give an opportunity for you before we go right here that uh, you can give your life to Jesus Christ and begin a new season a season of uh, power and a season of uh, great things that can take place in your life when you walk with Jesus just pray with me say dear Jesus I surrender my life before you I forgive my sins today cleanse me and wash me in Jesus' name I pray amen and amen that's how it begins now find a church start reading the Bible and commit your life to Jesus Christ and you will see how the kingdom of heaven will operate on your behalf how God will make things happen in your life thank you for watching Kingdom Insight Dr. Kazumba Charles has written some powerful and insightful books that will help you discover treasures and truth of God's Word and also give you a deeper understanding of the unchanging character of God.